so much for being here. Okay, Fifty Shades Darker, it's mm -hmm. back. Just how dark is it, Marsha Gay Harden? How dark do you want to go? Ah, okay. the darker the better. All I can say <laughs> is that I can never enter an elevator the same way again. <laughs> I think people have all seen that uh, in the trailer when they get in the elevator and you know he disappears down and then you see her going, ah, ah. every time now I get in an elevator, like, who's behind me? What's going on? Is anybody up to hanky-panky in the elevator? Um, it is dark. And it should be darker because this is the middle of the trilogy. So in any kind of transformative, transformational arc, yes. you're going to have the, your introduction where they combat ideas. Now in the second part of this journey, it's going to go darker. And in that coming together, it has to go dark. This isn't Fifty Shades Pink. <laughs> it's not Fifty Shades Pale. No. This is Fifty Shades Darker. And I don't think that if, if it were without the um, erotica, it wouldn't be what it is. It wouldn't be the franchise it is. But as per E.L.'s biggest desire, E.L. James, the writer's mm -hmm. biggest desire, it's not just erotica and, nor is it, and it's nowhere near porn um, be, and because there's a story. Right. underneath it and the story is a not so Disney Cinderella story all those women who were little girls grew up on Cinderella mm -hmm. now they're ready for the not Disney Cinderella uh, <laughs> did I, you read the books no you did not not until I was offered the role oh, no really so you didn't participate in the phenom at all no initially no so I were you sort of like what is this 50 shades of gray that everyone keeps speaking about all I knew was that when I used to live in New York and I would take the subway downtown you'd see girls reading books with covers over them <laughs> or on their Kindles <laughs> or whatever. And then they would like cross their legs and uncross their legs mm. and then cross and cross. Like it was like a, a symphony of leg crossing. <laughs> so you knew there was something going on in that book they were reading. And I knew that women were all very, um, we were talking about it like, oh my God, it's so fantastic. If I had ever, when I had read Erotica, I had read Anais Nin, who's like that classic, you know, old world. Mm. So it's a very, this is a very different world. This is very modern and kind of, there's a an accessibility to it, and I think that's what's making it. Every woman, you know, the girl next door, moms are all wanting to read it because they want to sort of spice up their life. But I didn't know about it, and so when I was offered it, I read them, and I thought, this is doable, and I want to bring something to Grace, and I want to be a part of this big phenomenon. But I want to make her a little tongue in cheek. Yeah. I want to humanize him. Yes. And so there's nothing more humanizing than a mother because she's the sure. one who's like, please, I changed those diapers. Get in here. You know, <laughs> like that aspect, that that way a mom will have. So I was able to bring that to the character um, along with that sort of Catherine Deneuve, that camel coat with those mm. gloves. It was yeah. so beautiful. So glamorous. Yeah.